Diego, Mr. Alderson isn't here yet, is he? No, senorita. Senor Gerald only left a few moments ago to pick him up at the station. Thank you. Yes, senorita. Not a sound, amigo. Not one peep. No, senor. Put him in the tack room and tie him up. Well, the candelabras are lovely. Give Silas the credit. He's been cleaning them all morning. Silas, they're beautiful. Thank you, Miss Audra. Did you get everything? Well, they were out of Rodolium brandy, but they said this would be just as good. Is this all right, Mrs. Barker? Perfect, just perfect, Silas. Thank you. Now, let's see, did we forget anything? The flowers would be nice. I'll cut some fresh from the garden. Thank you. Is there anything else I can do for your mother? No, but you better get yourself dressed. Who are you? Easy, ma'am. What do you want? I have the regretful duty, ma'am, to inform you that we're here to execute a sentence of death. the way fine animals were meant to be seen. Running free. Nothing touching them except the sun and God's own clean air. Magnificent. I trust the Army realizes we expect a magnificent price for them, General. <laughs> well, if they're all like that, we'll be doing business. But it isn't General anymore. I'm just a civilian now, you know. Just a civilian working for the Army Purchasing Department. I stand corrected. Oh, you see that lead stallion there? Mm-hmm. Now, that one is really going to cost you. Nick raised it. Oh, ho. Nick still loves horses, huh? That he does. I remember just before the Battle of Shiloh, I called a staff meeting. Everybody got there on time except my aide. You know where that brother of yours was? Doctoring a sick horse. When I called him on the carpet about it later, he said, General, you're the one who'll be ordering me into trouble, but it's the horse I'm riding who'll get me out of it. <laughs> That's Nick, all right. Yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> That's too bad he's away. I know he'll be sorry he missed seeing you. Oh, well. I'd probably just be boring him with an old man's memories. The war years are best forgotten anyway, you know? I suppose so. But it's good to remember that we won something important. Hmm? We lost something important, too, though. 
The South was part of us, you know. When we killed their men, burnt their fields, gutted their homes, we destroyed part of ourselves as well. Well, we should be home soon. Did you get our horses out of sight? Yeah, I hid them in the grove. Good. Barkley and Alderson will be here soon. As soon as you get rid of this rig, get up the road and keep a lookout. Right. No one upstairs. I guess we got them all. Take a look out back. Don't you think it's about time you explained what you're doing here? Let me know as soon as you see them. Ladies, I'm afraid I'm going to have to put you someplace for safekeeping. Safekeeping from what? What about the attic? Should be all right. Come on, ladies. Mother, don't go with him. I have no intention of going any place, not until I've had an explanation. Oh, please don't make it difficult for yourself. I'll try not to inconvenience you any more than necessary. The reason for all this will become apparent in good time. Sorry. Mrs. Barclay, my patience is not unlimited. Neither is mine. <laughs> well, I'm afraid uh, two of you Barclay women is a little bit too much for even me to handle. So I guess I'll have to make it easy on myself. Ladies, if you don't mind, Curtis, come with me. I want you to stay with him. I'm sorry to be so uninformative, but if you were to know too much at this point, you'd only be needlessly worried. Needless? You said you were here to kill someone. Oh, no, 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 no. I did not say kill. My exact words were to execute a sentence of death. An execution many years overdue. Who passed this sentence? We did. You won't get away with it. We employ a lot of men on this ranch. You're all the way on a trail drive. Friends drop by. I'll be there bad luck. Me to tie him up? Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary. My brother Jared will be home soon. That, my dear, is what we're counting on. Expected. Well, suppose I start you on a nice tall bourbon while I find out where everybody is. Do it.
Good afternoon, Mr. Barkley. Good afternoon. You'll forgive me, gentlemen, but I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Uh, no, you haven't. But at the risk of sounding inhospitable, may I ask what it is you're doing here? Where's my family? Uh, the ladies are, um, in another part of the house. Where in the house? In the attic. With a man. A man with a gun. A gun that may go off unless you do exactly as you're told. What do you want here? Your gun, Tanner. What is this, boys? A robbery? No, it's not. Then why are you victimizing this man's family? Victimizing? Oh, that's an interesting word. Sound familiar to any of you? Don't you recognize me? Should I? Yes. We've met before. We've met. Where? He wants to know where. Tell him where we've met, Barreau. In the bleeding ruin you made of a whole town, Mayville. You were in my command? Your command, you filthy Yankee. We was your victims. Ah, uh, no. You come riding in with your soldiers, hollering, crazy drunk, burning homes, shooting anything that moved. And what moved, you Yankee trash? Civilians, women and old men, and us here let out of the army for wounds. Now do you remember? Now do you know what we come here for? You're hanging. It's eight years overdue. Donnelly, go outside and pick out a good strong tree. Two sons. They're all supposed to be away on a cattle drive. They're alone. <laughs> Come on, Scott. <laughs> Will you tell me what's a bad blame funny you've been snickering and carrying on all the way home? <laughs> Sally Ann? <laughs> Sally Ann what? Oh, she's, gonna, she's gonna be awfully disappointed. <laughs> Well, so far, it's hilarious. You want to tell me more? Well, look at all the stuff she gave me here. Look. Look at this muffler. Holy uh, Lord, this. Look. Stillman snake repellent. The cattle drover's best friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Sally Ann must expect me to be fighting off snakes with my left hand, fighting off a grizzly bear with my right, and snow up to my eyeballs in the middle of a cattle stampede. <laughs> Well, you could go back out on the trail and suffer a little bit for Sally Ann's sake. <laughs> oh, now, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is it my fault that cattle buyer came a hundred miles down that trail to take the herd off our hands, huh? Well, you could have turned him down, told him you were all prepared to go the hundred miles or bust. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just got an idea. Hey, come here. Supposing that we don't tell her that the herd was bought out from under us, and that way we get to stay away a few more days. <laughs> what are you going to do with your snake bag, repellent? Well, now I just might drink it. Smells pretty good. Here, try it. Oh, Nick, is that supposed to repel a snake or charm it? <laughs> See you. Diego! No where in tarnation is he. Diego! Oh, I'm sorry. Clark! Oh, no, isn't that a fine thing? If you come back from a bone-crushing trail drive, you'd expect there'd be somebody here to put away your horses. Diego! Diego! Nick, you're gonna start an earthquake. Maybe he's up by the house. Come on, I'm starved. Ah! 
Welcome home, gentlemen. Inside, join the party. How much longer are you going to keep us here? Ma'am? I asked you how much longer... You know, I bet this old guitar still has a lot of music left in it. May I ask uh, who played it? I did. Oh? Did it give you a lot of enjoyment, miss? <laughs> yeah, you see, it's still got a lot of music left in it. If I had one more string, I could play you a right nice tune. Are you a musician? No, but uh, sometimes I'd like to earn a living making music. You do have a feeling for it. And that's rather strange, having such sensitivity, and yet being able to commit cold-blooded murder. Nobody said anything about murder. Yes, that's right. That's right. Let me see, what was the word you used? Uh, uh, execution, that's the word, execution. Now, that's a word the military might use. The war. General Alderson. Does this have something to do... You'll know sooner enough what we came here to do. Miss, maybe you'd like to try coaxing some music out of this. No, thank you. I, I don't really play very well. Besides, it's awfully warm in here. Would you mind opening a window, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, please, miss, I hate to have to hurt you. Oh, let go! Let go! I'm sorry. Now, if you'll both please sit down. I would be obliged, miss, if you wouldn't do that again. We're here, and here we're gonna stay till the job's done. That's insane. I was in his command. The general did not order that attack. Sure. He wasn't even there. We imagined it all. It happened, but not the way you Give think. Give me a hand. We'll Why don't you let the man talk? There's nothing to say. He did what he did, now he'll die for it. What do you lose by letting him talk? A few minutes? Isn't a man's life worth a few minutes? He isn't a man, he's a snake. Now, we swore we'd bring him to justice, now let's do it! Justice! You call this justice? You keep out of it! I say he's innocent. And of all the proof you've got, is your word that you were there, that my proof is just as good as yours. And I say he's innocent. Uh, explain that. I told you, I was in his command. Well, more than that, I was an aide to him. In Mabel. His aid. Oh, isn't that interesting? A lot of civilians were killed that night, I know. It was awful, I know that too. And I also know that if we lived to be a thousand years old, we'd never forget that night. And he did everything he could to stop it. Nick, you're not interested in the truth. Is that right? Well, mister, that's just what you've got. The truth. We have to talk. We won't be long. Burrow. Sit down, General. Jared, why didn't you tell me he was coming here? All I knew is that the Army was sending somebody out to buy our horses, Nick. I didn't know it was your ex-commanding general until he got here. Well, anyway, when, when all this is over, we'll, we'll show you a real proper welcome, huh? 
I've thought about you often, Nick, with the very best of good feelings, I may say. It's a shame sometimes it takes a war to draw men together. They share a deep experience and then they drift apart. I look forward to seeing you again very much. Very much. I'm sure all this will be all right. Of course it will. And now that you're through with your talk, you're gonna let him go and clear out of here? Mr. Barkley, we're not wanton killers. We are not the men you would make us out. We are compelled by duty. Bro here is a horse breeder. Mm -hmm. Tanner and Donnelly are farmers. I'm a school teacher. These are occupations we know we can never return to after today. Occupations we love, but are willing to abandon if that's the price we have to pay in order to avenge the lives of 16 innocent human beings. You, uh, you said before that uh, you served under him. Yes. That night at Mayville, you were there? I was. What uh, rank did you Lieutenant. Hold? Lieutenant? Ah, well, then you had uh, command responsibility. I did. And after the shooting started and he arrived in town... I arrived with him. Well... Well, I guess we just need another rope. Now you're out of your mind. You're gonna have to kill us all. You know that, don't you? Don't try to stop us. That'd be foolish. This man and your brother killed 16 innocent men, women, and children. We killed no one. Facts are facts. And your facts could be wrong. That is possible, isn't it? We were there, mister! So were they. You say that all you're interested in is justice. Then why not let a court of law decide whether these men are telling the truth or not? No, no, we can't risk that. But if they're guilty, they'll be punished by law. In a Yankee court? Now, let me tell you something about Yankee courts. There was rumors against this man back when it first happened. There was an investigation. Do you know what happened? Nothing. Nothing! They'd do it again. They'd let him go. There ain't gonna be no trial. Are you afraid of letting them tell their side of the story? All right, then. Since you've taken the law into your own hands, why not be the judge and jury, too? But hear them out. A trial, huh? With uh, us as judge and jury. You'd have nothing to lose. All right, Mr. Barkley, a trial it shall be. We, the jury, find the defendants guilty of murder. As judge, I sentence them to be hanged. <laughs> well, I guess that's just about what I would expect from men that aren't killers. Men who really want justice. A trial would be a waste of time. They're guilty as sin. Prove it. Macklin, he's trying to stall us. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Macklin. You say you want a trial, huh? All right, we'll give them a trial. We'll find them just as guilty and have the added pleasure of seeing them sweat. Counselor. You have 30 minutes to consult with your clients. In view of the proposed sentence, I suggest you make the most of the time allotted. How big a town was Mayville? A couple of hundred people. How many men? Hardly a one, except you, me, Tanner, Donnelly, mustered out of the army for bad wounds. All the Grote Able men were off with Beauregard down to Charlottesville. So the town posed no threat. It had neither war materials, crops, strategic roads, not even a potentially dangerous manpower reserve to justify an enemy raid. All we had was land. And all we had to put into the land was our dead. Fine southern dead, that is, not back-shooting Yankees. All right, Mr. Barkley. Sit down, Mr. Barreau. 
I have a few questions I'd like to ask. What do you mean? I already told you. Mr. Barkley wants to cross-examine. I agreed that he might. Sit down. Now, we're not going to discuss the tragedy that happened that night. We're merely going to try and determine once and for all who was responsible for it. Now, you say it was General Alderson. He commanded the division. It was his men. How many men? Well, in a division? Were sent into town that night. A full division, a half, a quarter, how many? Well, I, I don't know exactly. But there was enough to do what they planned. But not a full division. I ain't sure. Make sure. It wouldn't make no difference. Then you shouldn't mind answering the question. All right, it was only some. Now, what does that get you? A great deal. If he planned to destroy the town. That's all, Mr. Burrow. Nick, come on over here and sit down. I'll answer whatever you got to ask right from here. Nick! Oh, for... This is all a bad joke. Now, you were a lieutenant in General Alderson's division. Yes. You were his aide. I was. And you were with him in Mayville. I was. Did you have any unusual duties that night? I was duty officer. Duties of a duty officer, uh, post sentries, answer messages, uh, acting commander for the night. You was right in on it with him, weren't you, boy? A duty officer has nothing to do with planning strategy. He merely takes charge of unit security for the night. That's right. Then what is your point? Just this. That in any ordinary bivouac, the duty officer takes charge from sundown until sunup. And during that time, he's given an hour-by-hour -hour report of everything that happens in that unit. So better than anyone, Lieutenant Barkley was in a position to know what was or was not ordered. Go on. Now, Nick, as duty officer, you made your rounds that night. That's right. You were there when the men left for town. I was. How many men were there? Platoon-sized scouting detail, 38 men. Isn't a scouting detail usually squad strength, 12 men? Alderson sent 26 more men than were needed. Why? This wasn't a regular scouting detail. Obviously. Tell him why, Nick. Well, we were deep in the heart of the South. Most of the outfit was made up of pretty green troops. Besides, we had snipers taking pot shots at us all while we were there. So it was for the defense of the men themselves that so large a detail was sent. No other reason. And you're prepared to swear that there was no attack ordered that night? I am. Why shouldn't he? He'll hang if he don't. Macklin. We agreed, Burrow, that he'll be given a chance. Let him talk. A chance? I didn't agree to that. I agreed to let him sweat. Any of you hear anything said about a chance? Was nothing said about a chance. Then why go on with this at all? Now you're getting the idea, boy. Look, we're just wasting time. We came here to do a killing. Let's get on with it. Are you going to listen to your bloodthirsty friend, or do we continue with this trial? We continue with the trial. I'm needed downstairs. Which means, unfortunately, they're gonna have to tie you up. I know it really isn't necessary, but it's more for your benefit than it is ours. Otherwise, you might be tempted to try something foolish. And not too tight, Tanner. Now, I hope this won't be too uncomfortable, but I shouldn't be too long. What is your occupation, Mr. Curtis? I'm a photographer. And that night, after it was all over, you took a number of pictures, didn't you? Pictures of some of the victims who lay dead or wounded. That's right. Did you bring those pictures with you? Yes, I did. I wanted to show them to the general before we put the noose around him. Well, you can show him now. Deny these. I don't think this is necessary. We're not arguing the fact that innocent people were killed that night. I thought I made that clear. But we are arguing whether or not General Alderson was responsible. 
All right, let's take that point up. Mr. Curtis, you were a member of the Home Guard that night, weren't you? That's right. And whether it was a division or half a division of Yankee soldiers, you saw what they did. And what they did was murder. That's right, too, isn't it? That's what it was. Murder. They murdered my mother and two sisters. Did you see General Alderson there that night? Yes, I did. Killing and butchering with the rest of his men. You couldn't have mistaken him? No. No, I'd never forget his face. Are there any questions you'd like to ask, Counselor? Yes, but not right now. Thank you. Partner, I want to try something. of your command were in the town of Mayville on the night in question, and that those soldiers committed the killings. Is that correct? The question was, General, 16 civilians were killed. They were murdered by your soldiers, yes or no? I wouldn't exactly say murdered. 16 innocent people were slaughtered by your soldiers, yes or no? Yes. General, did you directly or indirectly cause or order that to happen? No, I did not. I want you to know, sir, that I believe you. And if it's humanly possible, we'll make them believe you, too. How? By placing the blame where it properly belongs, with the reckless, terrified, drunken misfits of that patrol. Yes? Now, were you able to identify the guilty that night? Not without difficulty. Small pockets of trouble broke out by the stables, the town hall. Then they became a mob. But later they were identified. And what happened to them? They were court-martialed. Then the guilty were punished. They were court-martialed. And there you have the simple, uncluttered truth. The guilty were identified and punished. What more do you want? Uh, you haven't asked General Alderson how they were punished. Will you answer that? Were they hanged? Were they sent to prison for 30 years? Were they treated in a manner to correspond with the severity of their crime? That was out of my hands. Uh, the investigation revealed that there were indeed Confederate sympathizers in the area. In itself, not an astounding conclusion in that Mayville is a town in the heart of the South. And anyone from a suckling babe of two months to a wrinkled grandmother of 90 would fit that description. Because of the sympathizers, however, the federal troops were understandably nervous. So that when they killed the civilians, they did so believing it an execution of duty against armed resistance. After the trial, they were let go. It's all right, Audrey. It's all right. Oh. Mother, you're hurting yourself. Oh. Help! 
Alderson gave a sworn deposition, saying the mistake might legitimately be due to the unfamiliar locale and the relative inexperience of the men. Without that, the court would have convicted. Oh, but there's more, still more. One piece that binds the whole ugly package together. It's true the detail preceded you into town, but you followed soon after, didn't you? To take part, to enjoy the killing. That's not so. You mean you weren't there? I was there. I tried to stop it. Stop it? How? I ordered them to break off immediately and return to bivouac. Did they? No. They were like animals. Drunken, green, frightened troops. They thought they were under attack. But they were in general, were they? No, they were not. In fact, there were no Confederate soldiers in the area. No. So then why were they firing? I told you why. You told us lies. You ordered it. You planned it. You rode hell for leather when you heard it had started so that you could be there to enjoy it. And your aide over there, he came screaming right in there with... No. That man, you swiped it. You were seen firing. We saw you. But not at civilians. Not at civilians, but there was no enemy to oppose. I know. Kill him! Kill him now! Who were you firing at if not civilians? At soldiers. At my own soldiers. It was the only way they wouldn't stop. I had to fire at my own men. I say you're a liar, Alderson. A dirty, filthy liar! Hear me out. Lies! Lies! I can prove it. Give me a chance to tell you the rest. I didn't hate those people. Do you know why I delayed outside Mayville? Do you? Barrow, Donnelly, after him. You, get over there. Tanner, get some rope. I want these two tied. As for you, Counselor, I hope you won't be as foolish as your brother. I'm a very good shot. All right. Let's proceed. smell smoke down there. I suppose we should, thank you. It's not necessary. It's our fault you're here. Check the other side of the house. Sparkly, you 
brother won't get far. As soon as we catch him, we'll proceed with justice. Don't reach for the guns, gentlemen. Unless you want me to prove a man can get just as dead shot as hung. Drop it, Macklin, and get over there. Come on, Sheridan, untie me. As soon as I get untied, Mr. Macklin, I'm gonna show you a little justice, Barkley style. Everything all right down there? Ought to heard a gunshot outside. He! There we are, lady. Well, it might have been a pleasure, Mr. Barkley. But as it is, I think we'd better get back to business. The gun, please. Give it to him, Heath. Nick. Do it. Nick, he's gonna hang you. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very wise decision. Mr. Curtis, you can take the ladies back up now. I trust you're seeing to their comfort. All right, let's go. We didn't have any choice, Heath. He jumped us from the roof, took us by surprise. It was a nice try, Mr. Barkley, but it's the last chance you're going to get. Tanner, if they so much as scratch, you know what to do. It's time. Listen to me. Can't you even die like a man, or do we have to carry you? I tell you, you're making a mistake. Sure. Now, are you walking, or do we carry you? You don't know what you're doing. Natalie! Moreau, take him! No! I tell you, no, you don't know what you're doing! No! 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 You can follow his example if you wish, or walk out like a man. Macklin, you go through with this and you're a dead man, I swear it. Move! Barkley, we're going to hang your general first. I tell you, I was on your side. <laughs> You're confused, General. It was a blue uniform you did your killing in. The start of the war, I and hundreds like me, officers in the Federal Army, offered our swords to the South. Sure. And then you all went back to the Yankee Army as spies, huh? Not all, but some, and I was one of them. Tell me, Yankee, the people you murdered that night in Mayville, before they died, did they make up wild tales like this, too? You're making a mistake, believe me. Believe what? If it was true, you would have told the Southern people you say you fought for and cleared the stink off your name. I couldn't. Want to do this myself. If the North won, I would have been shot for a spy. Lion Yankee, let's get this over with. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Macklin, you don't believe him, do you? It's true. What's true? That a Confederate ordered the slaughter of one of his own towns? Don't you understand I was a Confederate spy in the uniform of a Union general? We're wasting time listening to these lies. It's true. And the war was lost. We realized that, but out of that defeat, we could still have our victory. We're talking about the murder of a town. There can be no excuse for that. There can be, and there was. Hang him! No! I tell you, I was on your side. I tell you, there was much more at stake than the lives of those people. I gave, I gave the order for the slaughter at Mayville. No. But for a reason. A reason. You couldn't have done that. I was there. I was your aide. I would have known. You couldn't have done it. I gave the order to Colonel Brandt. He was killed in the action. I ordered that attack because I had to appear a dedicated Union general. The slaughter at Mayville was to conceal the work I was doing for your side, for our side, because even then, we were planning the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. I could prove that. March 16th, no, 17th. It was a tavern, I forget the name, just outside Macon, Tennessee. You can check it. You can check it. I was with Booth when he plotted the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. My brother Jonas was with me, he can tell you. 
Is that what you wanted to hear? Yes, that's it. And I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. But it had to be this way. These men are federal officers. They were never gonna hang you, Alderson. All we wanted was your confession. We? Yes, I was part of it. I'm sorry, Nick. You're sorry. <sighs> Believe me, Nick. I know what you've been through. But there was no other way. I couldn't tell you. A trick. All this a trick? Yes. An elaborate trick. But it worked. May heaven forgive me. It worked. Get the prisoner ready to return to Washington. Despite the orders from Washington. We understand, Jaron. The last time I'll come home two days early. I don't know whether I should slap you or kiss you. Well, I would prefer a kiss. I bet you would. <sighs> it will take Nick a little while, but he'll cool down. explain to you enough how really vital this all was. Well, now, maybe you can explain to me why you put the family through a night of... Well, I don't know what you'd call it. You were supposed to be away five days. I didn't know you and Heath would come back. You were never intended to be involved. Now, forget me. Forget me. What about Mother? Huh? An author! Those men were under strict orders that if Mother and Audra were in danger at any time, they were to call the whole thing off. The fire was an accident. Oh, so that makes it all all right. Maybe not. But if the government approached you, Nick, and said, here's a man who's responsible for wiping out an innocent town, a man we know helped plan the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. We know it, but can't prove it without your help. If they came to you, Nick, and said that, what would you do? Probably the same thing. <sighs> What's that smell? Snake repellent. What? Snake repellent. Sally Ann's snake repellent. She gave it to me for the drive. But she made a very big mistake. A big mistake. The only snake I've seen in the past three days has been wearing my tie.
Diego, Mr. Alderson isn't here yet, is he? No, senorita. Senor Gerald only left a few moments ago to pick him up at the station. Thank you. Yes, senorita. Not a sound, amigo. Not one peep. No, senor. Put him in the tack room and tie him up. Mother, the candelabras are lovely. Give Silas the credit. He's been cleaning them all morning. Silas, they're beautiful. Thank you, Miss Audra. Did you get everything? Well, they were out of Rodoli and brandy, but they said this would be just as good. Is this all right, Mrs. Bartner? Perfect, just perfect, Silas. Thank you. Now, let's see, did we forget anything? Well, flowers would be nice. I'll cut some first from the garden. Thank you. Is there anything else I can do for you, Mother? No, but you better get yourself dressed. Who are you? Easy, ma'am. What do you want? I have the regretful duty, ma'am, to inform you that we're here to execute a sentence of death. the way fine animals were meant to be seen. Running free. Nothing touching them except the sun and God's own clean air. Magnificent. I trust the Army realizes we expect a magnificent price for them, General. <laughs> well, if they're all like that, we'll be doing business. But it isn't General anymore. I'm just a civilian now, you know. Just a civilian working for the Army Purchasing Department. I stand corrected. Oh, you see that lead stallion there? Mm-hmm. Now, that one is really going to cost you. Nick raised it. Oh, ho. Nick still loves horses, huh? That he does. I remember just before the Battle of Shiloh, I called a staff meeting. Everybody got there on time except my aide. You know where that brother of yours was? Doctoring a sick horse. When I called him on the carpet about it later, he said, General, you're the one who'll be ordering me into trouble, but it's the horse I'm riding who'll get me out of it. <laughs> That's Nick, all right. Yes, <laughs> sir. That's <laughs> ah, too bad he's away. I know he'll be sorry he missed seeing you. Oh, well. I'd probably just be boring him with an old man's memories. Diego, 
go. Mr. Alderson isn't here yet, is he? No, senorita. Senor Gerald only left a few moments ago to pick him up at the station. Thank you. Yes, senorita. Not a sound, amigo. Not one peep. No, senor. Put him in the tack room and tie him up. Mother, the candelabras are lovely. Give Silas the credit. He's been cleaning them all morning. Silas, they're beautiful. Thank you, Miss Audra. Did you get everything? Well, they were out of Rodoli and brandy, but they said this would be just as good. Is this all right, Mrs. Bartner? Perfect, just perfect, Silas. Thank you. Now, let's see, did we forget anything? The flowers would be nice. I'll cut some first from the garden. Thank you. Is there anything else I can do for your mother? No, but you better get yourself dressed. Who are you? Easy, ma'am. What do you want? I have the regretful duty, ma'am, to inform you that we're here to execute a sentence of death. the way fine animals were meant to be seen. Running free. Nothing touching them except the sun and God's own clean air. Magnificent. I trust the Army realizes we expect a magnificent price for them, General. <laughs> well, if they're all like that, we'll be doing business. But it isn't General anymore. I'm just a civilian now, you know. Just a civilian working for the Army Purchasing Department. I stand corrected. Oh, you see that lead stallion there? Mm-hmm. Now, that one is really going to cost you. Nick raised it. Oh-ho. Nick still loves horses, huh? That he does. I remember just before the Battle of Shiloh, I called a staff meeting. Everybody got there on time except my aide. You know where that brother of yours was? Doctoring a sick horse. When I called him on the carpet about it later, he said, General, you're the one who'll be ordering me into trouble, but it's the horse I'm riding who'll get me out of it. <laughs> That's Nick, all right. Yes, <laughs> sir. <laughs> That's too bad he's away. I know he'll be sorry he missed seeing you. Oh, well. I'd probably just be boring him with an old man's memories. The war years are best forgotten anyway, you know? I suppose so. But it's good to remember that we won something important. Mm hmm? We lost something important, too, though. 
The South was part of us, you know. And we killed their men, burnt their fields, gutted their homes. We destroyed part of ourselves as well. Well, we should be home soon. Did you get our horse?